Jesus. Oh, we've got so much to talk about today that that is all I'm going to say about Flutter 112 itself. Uh, this is live. It's rolling out now for download at flutter.dev. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. And uh, yes, I am back. So in this video, we are going to talk about Flutter Interact and uh, the announcements which happened. I know I am pretty, uh, I guess, late in the league, but that's fine because uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, what I feel about these um, announcements which happened. Also, because fortunately, I was a part of the event, so I know a lot of things why they were like that. And uh, to be honest, I personally feel that uh, this event was somewhere you know combination of designer plus developers they wanted to fill the gap which is, which is between designers and developers so so it was mostly oriented about design because flutter is a ui toolkit first so yeah that makes sense and uh, so without wasting any time i'm gonna just start uh, my views about all those announcements um, so the first announcement which i could see was uh, google fonts yes so google fonts uh, is coming as a pack uh, we've got the new Google Fonts package that Matthias mentioned for easy access to nearly a thousand open source fonts. Where you can use a lot of fonts on runtime and maybe um, you can change a lot of fonts in your application without, you know, downloading other, other fonts and then, you know, placing in your assets directory. So that's, that's a kind of a very tough job, but uh, now you can do this particular uh, thing using a package. So that's a good thing. But uh, personally, to be honest, I don't use a lot of fonts in my application. Uh, mostly I use hardly one to two fonts uh, in my app. So it doesn't bother me much, but yes, it's a good thing. So yeah, I'm good with that. So definitely you can use this thing. Uh, you have to go to pub.dev, uh, which is kind of a, a package manager for Flutter where you can have a lot of packages. Second thing they actually talked about was how um, they onboarded eBay Motors. So it's it's kind of an announcement that eBay Motors is also using Flutter for their application. So there's not much to talk about. Um, now the two big announcements which I personally knew about already because I was checking all the source codes and uh, what is exactly going to happen. So one is the uh, desktop support. Yes, it, it it is now available for Mac OS in the dev channel. The first time now you can use release mode to build a fully optimized Mac OS application using Flutter. So an adventurous developer could now share a complete production speed executable with others. Uh, in the dev channel. <laughs> so that's a crucial point because you cannot use it on the stable directly because it is by default disabled on stable. But yes, on if you are on dev channel or if you move to dev channel, then you can definitely use it. Uh, so it's available for Mac OS only as of now or the stability for uh, Mac OS is there um, because I haven't used yet the desktop uh, um, embedding stuff with Flutter um, because uh, I was waiting for the right time. Maybe I'll play with the macOS part so you can expect a video soon about that on the dev channel uh, especially. So um, yes, so there are a lot of things which they are doing with the desktop uh, thing for supporting Linux as well as Windows. But yes, Mac OS is there because uh, they said I talked to them and they said that it was easy for them to, you know, um, to support Mac OS first because they are already doing the iOS thing and it's kind of the same. Uh, so it was easy as compared to Windows or even Linux. Maybe next thing which they, they are going to do would be more like, uh, you know, for Linux and then they will move to Windows. So that's a good thing. Then obviously there was, um, you know, a lot of people waiting for Flutter Web to, you know, become better. So now Flutter Web is in beta. I'm not sure how they actually figured it out that they should go to beta because... So today... We're proud to announce that our web support has hit the beta milestone and is ready for active development. I personally still, I don't know, I, just, I don't feel that it's still um, good enough to go f into production. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, until, unless it's uh, stable, you can, cannot definitely, you know, go into the production mode yet. Um, but yeah, they, there are a lot of things which they have worked on. There are a lot of changes which they have done with the uh, Flutter for web um, stuff. 
and uh, i'm really excited what they do in the upcoming year which is 2020 and then maybe we will have a good idea about uh, you know what flutter for web is gonna bring to us because right now um i have like received a lot of updates from uh, many users there that they are also facing some uh, lagginess and all that issue uh especially when they are using android it uh, works pretty good on win um maybe ios uh even mac os but sometimes it feels um very laggy on android but those are the things which they are already working on they are working on the performance of the application the web application they also uh, announced few plugins which are now available uh, for web as well like uh, you know shared preferences which definitely makes sense because you want to use it then there are some firebase stuff which you can use with web i don't know how much stable they are but yes definitely i'm gonna try all of them i'm gonna make a video very soon on this particular topic as well so yeah that's a big thing then um they announced dart 2 2.7 so basically um there are few changes few improvements but the uh good part is that you can now use extension methods the way it has been you know um like there are some things with extension methods that you cannot use but yeah the way it has been supported you can definitely use now using dart 2.7 which comes with the stable flutter release which is 1.12 if I'm not wrong, yeah. So 1.12, and uh, there there may be few hot fixes as well. So check it out. And uh, the f um, another thing which I am really excited about is hot UI and the new layout explorer. Well, the idea with the layout explorer is that you can actually interact with these properties live in your tool before you even get to your code. So Zoe, I think this is a flex problem. Let's set the flex parameter and see what we get. Ta -da. Oh, good it looks like our problem has been fixed. And now when we go back to our code, we have confidence, not only that we know what code to change, but also what caused the problem in the first place. So these are the new changes which they have done. So hot UI is kind of uh, inspired somewhere from, um, you know, the Swift UI thing where they can see what they are doing. It's kind of, you know, the, you want to see a designer um, maybe tool where, whatever you are writing as a widget can be you know can, you can see there and then the layout explorer actually gives you a lot of you know if, if you if you are missing a flex related issue is there or maybe if you are missing some padding thing where for because of that you are receiving maybe uh, those uh, you know um some pixel issues or maybe you have seen these kind of issues in a lot of places that uh, uh, you, you have this like um, you can say that yellowish uh, border type of thing which comes at the end uh, so there are some resize issues so all these issues can be fixed using the layout explorer and i'm i'm really sh uh, excited because uh, this particular thing was very much needed because a lot of people i have talked to have been facing this issue where they don't know how to fix a certain problem it's it, they always get this overflow exception but they don't know how to fix it so yeah the, if you are also getting this overflow issue uh, sorry uh, overflow issue then uh, definitely uh, you can check out the layout explorer which is in preview and it's available in android studio as of now if i'm not wrong and uh, so you definitely check it out um then there are new dev tool enhancements they have made and uh, it now has its kind of its own app so yes you can check the new dev tools there are a lot of uh, things they have made it easy to use so yes i'm really excited about dev tools as well because i personally use dev tools uh for i know um for when when i have to deal with the uh, optimization of the app or even performance um then um they talk about flutter octopus where they brought that you know giant octopus I give you the Flutter Octopus. <laughs> Zoe? Mm -hmm. So what I'm presenting here is a Mac Catalina machine running against seven simultaneous uh, targets. That includes uh, Pixelbook Go, uh, an iPhone S, an iPad Pro, a Pixel 4 XL, and an ancient Android tablet as well as both the Windows version or the uh, the Mac version and the web version of this app, all being debugged simultaneously from a single set of source code, and each one of these 
uh, apps has their own state. So. Well, there are a lot of devices from uh, iMac to you know iOS phones, Android phones, and what they have done is now you can use n number of devices simultaneously i mean you can debug all of them together so you can just have an android ios ipad imac whatever you want mac os and you can debug all of them simultaneously so that's that's a pretty good thing because sometimes it happens to me i want to check um the things with with uh, my both android as well as ios device so yeah really excited about that then um um, uh, you might have been aware of uh, Flutter, awesome, awesome Flutter, right? So it's a GitHub repo which is maintained by it, maintained by Robert, and uh, he actually created some arts which they talked about, and uh, it, it's like you know they wanted to show that you know what developers can do with Flutter, and uh, now that guy is also doing a lot of stuff with his art. People can buy it, you and they can paint it on the matters or a lot of things. So yeah, really good thing. Um, then there was um, because it was you know mostly about uh, how designers can use Flutter. So. It, there was something called supernova which they just announced themselves for flutter and uh, you can create your designs in supernova and you can export them similar thing they did with um, i i don't know <laughs> there were so there was kind of two competition which was happening there was uh, because at the next moment they um, that there was someone from the adobe team so adobe xt you can do the same thing almost and uh, I, I personally felt that these are both competitors so let's see how that works because I haven't used it yet but yeah the idea is to you know design at one place and then export it to flutter and then you can do the changes as well so yeah that's a good thing then they talked about um, the Redrix app which was you know made by G Skinner so um, G Skinner team actually came and they talked about uh, a lot of stuff which they have been doing so there were a lot of samples which they created most of them are open source I guess so you can check that check them out on flutter.gskinner.com So really good um, uh, you can say the, the whole idea is good that how you can do these kind of things there was a specific talk on that as well the sparkle party uh, so all of these talks are available on flutter youtube channel you can check them out and they told that how they actually thought about all those use cases how they actually brought that idea or, or those animation into flutter so that was a very interesting talk you can definitely check it out and then as i told you that uh, there was some adobe xt announcement as well and uh, um you could see when they were talking about the web as well there were um uh you know they wanted to tell you that uh, um the web part is still not done okay <laughs> there are a lot of things which is yet to come there are a lot of packages or plugins they will work on uh, so yeah it's it's kind of it cannot take some time then they also talked about the accessibility how it can be important so you can also watch that particular talk and uh, uh, there was a spoiler that <laughs> when they were actually showing the presentation there was um, in the VS Code on the left hand side there was a folder for Fushia as well so yeah they have been doing some work with Fushia everyone knows about it but 
they don't talk about it so let's see what happens with fushia and flutter but yeah really excited announcements a lot of things which they have been doing there are a lot of companies now getting involved so which means that there will be a lot more flutter jobs in the market as well so yes there are a lot of um, opportunities out there now i can see them and about the flutter interact overall it was a great event i interacted with a lot of people and as I, as i if you are following me on social media then also talked to that uh, i actually could bring some dashes with me so definitely i'm going to distribute them to the person uh, like if i feel that these these people are doing a lot of stuff with flutter or they are trying to do something good then definitely i would try if i can give my dash to them and uh, yeah so that it can motivate you probably and then um i also talked to the engineering team and a lot of other guys there it was fun and a uh, lot of people from the flutter community also came you might be watching them overall everywhere so yeah it was a great week indeed so really excited about all this um, uh, announcements you could say and uh, i'm gonna make a lot of videos on all these things so uh, please be sure that you are on the right place and also subscribe to the channel if you are not the subscriber already because a lot of videos are coming and then um, there is a live streaming which i am working on so i'm gonna bring that as up as well and that's it i guess about this particular video and that's all the announcement which happened kind of mostly so yeah that's about flutter interact then there's a flutter uh, clock challenge which is still running on so you can maybe go to flutter or dev and you can check it out and you can participate if you want so thank you guys for watching i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did the press the like button and also subscribe to the channel and i'll share more updates pretty soon on all these things also i forgot to mention that there was a new announcement for android embedding version 2 apis where it's easy to now you know add flutter to existing apps there is a whole talk which i am giving on android De in delhi so i'm gonna work on uh, a particular video on that as well so it, it's gonna come very soon so bye bye take care and i'll see you in the next video